Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. Welcome to this service of Huntsville First United Methodist Church on this glorious Easter morning. I invite you now, calm your hearts and minds as we invite the Holy Spirit to lead us in worship and we listen and meditate during the playing of a medley by the heavenly honkers. Please stand as you are able for this morning's words of greeting taken from Psalm 9 and read responsively. Out of the darkness of grief and despair comes a message of hope. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We run to the tomb to see for ourselves, and it is true, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We hear a voice call our name, and we know our risen Lord is with us now and always. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God. Christ is indeed risen. As we lift up this glorious hymn from Charles Wesley, Christ the Lord is risen today, hymn number 302. Join us and sing. Like him, like him we rise. Let us continue this joyous praise as we lift up our affirmation of faith and gladly say what we believe on this Easter Sunday. You will find it printed in your bulletin. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Indeed, it is good to be in God's house on this special day, this day of resurrection, this Easter Sunday. We welcome all of you to be with us today. We especially welcome those among you who may be visiting. I invite you all, take the registration pad. Take a little extra time filling it out today. Make sure we have not just your name, but also your, your mail or email addresses so that we may make sure our records are correct, or if you're visiting, that we may send you a note of appreciation that you are with us in this service today. I draw your attention to our Ad Huntsville First insert, where we list a lot of things that are going on in the church. A couple of things in particular I want to uh, bring to your attention. Uh, this Easter Sunday, we have a special offering. Some of you may have received an offering envelope. This is to support our ministries, and we invite you to put a special offering in that special envelope, marking it for our Easter, uh, uh, our ministry program. We also invite you next Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, for a special event Introducing you to our Stephen Ministry program. Stephen Ministry is a, is a lay-led ministry where people, like, uh, like many of you here, uh, participate in the struggles that people go through. A death, a divorce, a sickness, a job loss. When the pastors come, we can only visit for a brief period of time. But Stephen Ministers will walk with you through that challenge. And this program on Saturday morning will introduce you to the Stephen Ministry program we have in this church. Potentially, some of you may feel called to participate as Stephen Ministers, but there's no obligation. This is simply an information meeting. We invite you all to consider participating in that. At the end of the service today, it is our tradition to sing the Hallelujah Chorus by Handel. Some of you may feel led to join us in that singing. At the end, you're welcome to come up to the, to the sanctuary choir loft. There will be music available, and you're welcome to join us to sing up here or sing where you are in the pews. As we turn now to a time of corporate prayer, I remind you, as I said, that we are a Stephen Ministry congregation, and there will always be a Stephen Minister available to pray with you at the end of this service. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, on this wonderful morning, where we remember this most remarkable event in human history, the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we are humbled by your love for us. Indeed, Lord, we confess that in these modern times, 2,000 years later, the shocking reality of what happened on this day is muted. To say that your son was raised from the dead three days after his crucifixion has become a byline, something we just take for granted. Yet it is staggering to imagine what that really means. Indeed, many of us, if we're honest about it, have had doubts about this. We confess in this modern scientific age, resurrection of the dead seems implausible. Lord, we don't understand it. And we confess that too often we dismiss it. And yet, Lord, there are greater mysteries. And if we truly embrace them, we are staggered by your love for us. We must admit we do not have perfect knowledge. That what we know cannot be used to constrain what is possible. Otherwise, we would need scientists like me to explore your creation. And indeed, it is your creation. We are staggered by what you have made. 
and yet you love us. We are staggered that in the immensity of the universe, people like us have been made, and that you are even mindful of us staggers us, and yet you love us. Indeed, how do we even rate your awareness considering the immensity of all that you have done? And yet you love us. We know this because you sent your son. You came to us in our form, walked among us, taught us, showed us how to live, showed us who you were when you didn't have to because you loved us that much. And that by conquering death, you have shown us that nothing can separate us from your love because you love us that much. Lord, this is truly the staggering thing that is hard for us to take in. Your grace is amazing, and we are unworthy. Thank you, Lord, for loving us that much. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son. Thank you, Lord, for saving us because we needed it. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. We are speechless, and we can only pray what your Son, our Savior, taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, we celebrate and praise you on this Resurrection Sunday. You, the greatest offering in all of human history. May we never forget your obedient and sacrificial love, the same servant love that you commanded us all to emulate with our words, our ministry, and our lives. We humbly dedicate these gifts and ties to manifest your presence in the world in all that we do. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Today's scripture lesson comes from Luke 24, 1 through 12, and it can be found in your pew Bible, if you want to read along, the New Testament, page 85. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Oh, the music this morning has been magnificent. Easter is such a great, great day indeed. I will tell you, this is the first time I've preached in this church on Easter Sunday in 19 years. That ought to give you pause. You may have thought of come to another service. Plus, this is the only service that has three ministers in it today, which means they think I need help. <laughs> so good to see Coy. We're glad to see Coy. And appreciate Henry always 
supporting us in what we do. This is a great day of victory. Now, Thursday night I spoke at Maundy Thursday and I was instructed so much I did not know what to say at least 20 times. It's a somber service. It's a somber service. It's a somber service. Well, today it's not a somber service. Christ is alive. Christ indeed. In Psalm 118, David wrote, and we see this psalm of victory. Those verses that we begin to see early on, oh, give thanks for the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. And he repeats it in verse 2 of Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And then the psalmist wrote these beautiful words that many of us could just quote. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. We have been looking forward to this moment. During our Lenten journey, we have come thus far. We've had wonderful Holy Week experiences. And now this morning we celebrate the good, good news that Christ is alive and there's good news out of the cemetery. You know, for a number of years I pastored the church, did a lot of funerals in the cemetery a lot. My children always went with me. We had that child care balance of who was working, daycare, and so my children at young ages, they started attending funerals and going to the hospital and all those things. My, they love the funeral home. They let them play in the caskets. They loved it. Gave them donuts, treats. I mean, to them, it was just like a playground. Well, one day, my youngest, our youngest son, Bub, was with me and he started asking a lot of questions as we left the funeral home to go to the cemetery. What is that? I said, it's a casket. He said, What's in, what what they do with it? And I, I'm trying to explain to like a three-year-old and we're not getting very far. And so I said, don't worry about it. It's, it's something we need to do. You need to be still, be nice, be quiet, be but just don't be bad. We get there, and I tell the funeral director, I said, now, guy, that was, the funeral home was right next door to the church. So we were friends. I said, and his name was Guy. I said, Guy, I want you to watch Bub today. He's got a lot of questions. Please pay attention to him. He said, oh, I've got it. No problem. When I began to read the scripture, behold, I see a new heaven and a new earth coming down from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. I see this figure that looks like my son walking beside me. I don't know how much you know about the graves and the cemeteries and the caskets, but there's a lever that's at eye level with a three-year-old that if you push it, the casket will go down. <laughs> he promptly goes to that casket and pushes it and says, Down, castle, down. <laughs> I cannot tell you what the funeral home director said. <laughs> but it was not in a responsive reading. <laughs> we stopped it, we smiled, and it's been one of those memories that has carried many such wonderful times to tell the story. It was one of those that I didn't know the family and they offered to give me, I said, listen, this story will be worth anything you give to me, so please keep your gift. But you know, there is a lot of activity in the cemetery on resurrection morning. On that third day, the, the ladies go to the tomb. As we heard in the reading from Luke 24. They go and they're probably just checking to make sure everything is alright. And then when they came, they found all of a sudden surprise. The stone is not in front of the tomb. It's open. They were really perplexed. They looked in and they did not see the body. They see two men 
And they spoke to them and said, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, for he is risen. Good news began early that morning. It says they were terrified. They weren't sure what to do, where to go. And then they decided they would go back and tell the disciples. There's a lot of running in the cemetery that morning. The women leave and they go tell the men. You'll never believe what we just found. And remember, people in the tomb told them that the two men that were there said, Hey, remember, he told you that he was going to suffer and die and be raised on the third day. And they said, Yes, he did. Isn't it wonderful to see the word be kept? They were surprised somewhat that Jesus had kept his word. We are often surprised this day when people are true to their word. We have become too cynical, too skeptical. Good news abounds that morning. Jesus has been true to what he said he was going to do. The tomb has been rolled away. He is not there. So these ladies, Joanna, Mary Magdalene, mother of Jesus, other women, they go back to where the men were. Because the disciples were in hiding. They had experienced Good Friday and they'd seen what had happened. And they were fearful for their lives. Remember, Peter had only escaped because he had lied. Well, when they come back and they tell the disciples, look what we found. Let us tell you our experience. Let us share with you our surprise. We have good news to report. In fact, the J Jerusalem Gazette that morning should have published with a headline that said, Good news from the cemetery. Jesus is alive. So they tell the men, Jesus is alive. <laughs> Guess what? They don't believe it. What's Peter say? I've got to go back and check. He may have trusted, but he felt like he needed to verify. So back here they go, running to the cemetery. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. They told that story, and we love the story. And in Henry's prayer, he said... Occasionally we've come to where that might be a byline and don't understand the full impact of all that was meant in Christ being raised from the dead. But on Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus is alive, but the story is not finished. The story of the resurrection is not finished. For you see, we are part of the completion of the story. The women were terrified. The men were amazed. We have many feelings. And even as we come today, we bring with us fears and concerns, troubles and hurts that break our hearts. The resurrection then would be that in our lives we are raised out of ash, out of darkness, out of our grief, out of our sorrow, out of our disappointments, out of our family dysfunctions, that we are raised up into newness of life. That is the power of the resurrection. We probably all watched, saw pictures of the burning of Notre Dame in Paris this week, the great cathedral, that basilica. We 
Regardless of where our perspective may be, I hate to see a thousand or so years, 800 years of history just go up. But it's a reminder of the fragility of life. Life is like a vapor that appears for just a moment, like a mist, and then it's gone. But there was a picture that I saw on Facebook, so you know it had to be true. <laughs> you know, if you, if you read it on Facebook, that's almost nigh near the Synoptic Gospels. <laughs> but there was a picture of all the rubble and still some of the smoke kind of coming up from the ashes and those things that had burned. But did you remember seeing what was still standing? The cross. The cross. Symbolic in so many ways that in the ash, in the brokenness, in the darkness, in the most difficult times, the cross is empty. He is not here, for he is alive, shining bright for us. So often, we do not know the power of the resurrection because we have not embraced the power of Jesus being raised from the dead and the fact that he can raise us up too. Wherever we may be in this status of life at this moment, whether it's we're soaring high like eagles are we sinking low? Know that God's work is not finished. It's finished in your lives when Christ comes and lifts us up. We're reminded there's resurrection. Reminded the power of the resurrection that while once we were lost, now we are found. My own life, I've known the darkness of life and could only appreciate the power of the resurrection once I've been able to be raised back, almost back, to wonderful, wonderful living like Jesus. We're always on a journey. I hope that for you, resurrection means hope for the journey. Life for the journey. And that the story is not finished. And will not be. And that's how the Gospels are meant to be. In Mark Gospel, in the account of the resurrection, he leaves it hanging. The women were afraid. That's the last verse. He doesn't explain the road to Emmaus. He gives no indication of the appearances. Just... They were afraid. And then it was up to the disciples and the others to move forward with a resurrection. May Christ resurrect us in the midst of any ash, darkness, brokenness, pain, sorrow to new life. Amen and amen. May we bow together and pray. God, we give you praise and thanksgiving for the rising of Christ from the dead. Let us know that the resurrection power is not finished. It's not a story that has an ending. It's only finished in our lives. And then it continues in the lives of others. So for each of us who sit here this morning 
and know the trouble and the pain of the living life. May we find hope, encouragement, peace in knowing that Jesus lives. Lives for us. And that in the midst of the ash and the darkness and the flames, the cross stands empty because Christ is alive. Beckoning us to follow him and believe in the resurrection power so that it may manifest itself in our lives. The story is not finished. Let it be finished in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.